Okay, this is going to be a short video on the issues that arise when exporting FGDC fonts from ArcMap and loading them into a design program like Adobe Illustrator. One of the things that happens is Adobe Illustrator is not recognizing the font as it is in Arc, as it's coming from Arc. So what we need to do is do a little bit of quick magic to make that actually happen so that the fonts recognize each other. And then what we do is we do a find and replace all to get all of the fonts coordinated back to the FGDC font and display their proper symbology. So here we are. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and export this as an AI file. And this part is less important, but since I didn't have one set up and ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and start from here. Um, I'm going to get some weird artifacty things from it uh, because I don't have this completely set up the right way, but my fonts should come in okay. So one of the first things we want to make sure is we want to make sure that we vectorize layers with bitmaps and marker fills so that we get vectors and not force arc to rasterize anything. And then we want to make sure that convert marker symbols to polygons is unchecked because having this check will convert it to the, the fonts to polygons so it'll stroke them or outline them and we don't want to do that we want to keep the fonts dynamic so that if we need to adjust them we can adjust them directly instead of having to adjust or change the polygon that's created from the text font so make sure that that's unchecked and then use display expression for item name make sure that's checked and that ensures that we get our layers in as they're labeled over here in our AI document. So it's kind of nice and convenient to have happen. Then we want to go ahead and save this in the correct folder. For the purpose of what I'm working with right here, I'm going to go ahead and save this in S T Tierra and I'm going to just call this font fix. So that I have, uh, so that I don't mess up when I'm actually doing the layout for Tier Amaria. I want to actually have a just a font fix one. So I'm gonna go ahead and say save. Yes, CMYK. All of that's happy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up AI while that's finishing, and we'll see that that should get done fairly quickly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, and it's gonna give us a warning right off the bat. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of warning checking so we go go through all of the warnings and say okay 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 we need to get rid of all of the clipping masks and i'll show a quick method for getting rid of clipping masks and then we'll go ahead and do a find and replace all fonts so we have to do a little work initially but it's not that bad there's my font fix file so it's going to pop up and it's going to talk, show me in the upper left hand corner that we have some font issues missing. So we have a font problem. So we can do a find font. And sure enough, right here, right off the bat, we have GeoSymbol 1. And when I click on one of these, the map jumps around to the location of where those missing fonts are so that I can see them. So let's start with font one. And what I'm going to do is I clicked on it, we're zoomed in. I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in to a ridiculous extent so that when I do this, the font that is in question is right in front of my face like this. So right here, that font is bad. So now we need to say done. And what we need to do further is we need to come in and get rid of all our, our clipping groups. So the way I do this is we need to be careful because we don't want to clip everything. So you want to make sure that you only select the features that you want to have clip. So let's say uh, a perfect example is if I had all of the New Mexico roads loaded in, it would extend beyond my boundary of the quadrangle. So that would be one that I would say want to lock to prevent doing this process. So prevent it from me doing the following process of getting rid of the clipping path. So there's a suggestion, a hint. <clears throat> Let's say I didn't want contacts and faults to have the clipping mask removed. So I have locked it from being edited. Then what we do is we come to our clip group. We select the first clipping path and say select same fill and stroke. And this looks at everything that has a no transparency stroke or a, a no color stroke and a no color fill. So we select that. 
and it selects every single one of them that is a no color stroke, no color fill vector file. And then we can go ahead and delete it. And now that we've deleted it, when I click on my click clip group, it switches to a group. So we need to do this for everything. So the unfortunate thing is what I do is I come through and I select all of these one by one, and it usually converts everything that was a clipping path like we saw to just a group. And this is a little tedious and time consuming, but it does get the job done. So now that we've gone through, we can see that I'm probably not going to have any more clip groups, and I still do have some, so I got to go through and get all those fixed. And once we get rid of all of those clipping groups, uh, this would have been a good example of this right here. The quad index would have been a good one to not remove the clipping paths from, but that's okay. So once we get rid of all of these, and we'll see that because I had contacts and faults locked, I actually can't, I did not get rid of it as a clip group. So this is what that lock did. It prevented it from deleting this clipping path right here. So that's how that worked. I locked it so that this wouldn't be, oops. I locked it so that, I keep selecting the wrong one, sorry. I locked it so that it couldn't be selected which is really nice. It's a convenient way to prevent things from losing their clipping path if you want to retain it. Just checking to make sure we got rid of all of our clipping paths that we intended to get rid of. And sure enough, we did. Now what I do is I do a control A, select everything except for our file that's locked. It will not select that. Let's do that again as an example. So if I do control A, I select all except for the layer that's locked, which is good because we don't want to remove the group from that. We want to keep a group. But what we'll do now is if we do control shift G, that ungroups everything and it frees us from having to click into all of the different sub layers and subgroups um, in our document. So that's a quick way to get rid of all of the grouping that occurs. It doesn't get rid of the um, the layers, it get ri gets rid of the groups inside of a layer. So we still so have some here in orientation point. So I go ahead and select it, control shift G, and it ungroups all of those. I think it's object, yeah, ungroup is the way to do it. If you don't want to use the hotkey or don't remember the hotkey, control shift G, object ungroup. We'll do the same exact thing. What this does is it makes it easier for us to go ahead and get everything ungrouped. And that allows us to directly select our text. So let's get back to where we were. We were right here, and we know that this font has an issue. So we still have a group inside of text. So let's ungroup that. Oop, it, there we go. So. Now I can individually select the component instead of like it was, selecting the whole group. And we can see here that we have our uh, uh, FGDC geo symbol 01 asterisk. This asterisk is telling us that it can't find this font. And what we need to do is click this drop down and select the regular without the asterisk. And what this does is it tells it, oh, I'm looking for this specific font. And what it does then is then it finds it and is able to display the correct tick symbol in this case as we want. Now the nice part about this is now we have a correct font intermixed with fonts that aren't actually showing. They still have the asterisk here. But what we can do is for this one, this is geo symbol one. So we go to type, find font, select geo symbol one that has the red asterisk next to it. And then we need to find the matching corresponding symbology. So in this case, Geo Symbol 1, I know, has this symbol set for it. So we select that symbol set. And I actually have a little cheat sheet that I use. Let me open up the email I just sent to Dave so that I can show my cheat sheet.
So here is my little cheat sheet, and this is what I use. So we can see that symbol one has this arrow pointing up and this big triangle pointing down. And if we look at our AI file, that matches this right here. So that's how I know that this needs to be replaced with this. And I click change all, and we'll see that all of these now get changed. All of them got changed to the correct font. And then we just have to do this for the rest of the document. So let's go through that process pretty quick. I'm going to go type, find font, click on one of my yellow cautionary ones, say find, and it's right here somewhere. I've got a warning up somewhere because it's not navigating to where it should be. Interesting. I'm a little nervous about that. My AI is glitching. Ah, oh, shoot. Okay, my AI is doing very bad things right now. Normally, when you click on a symbol and click find, the document jumps to where that is. I'm not sure why mine is not doing this right now. So give me a second so that I don't lose where I'm at. Let's try and get some of these other ones taken care of. Yeah, normally you will find that this jumps between fonts like that. It should do this process on any of these ones that are warnings. And I'm not sure why it's not doing it now. But let's go ahead and find another one. But the process, you've seen the process now. But let's go ahead and there's one. So. We select, oops, Okay, my AI is doing a very, very bad thing right now. Uh, normally, you would come and select the font like I had done previously, but somehow I'm jumping into a... Um, Okay, there we go. Uh, um, um, isolation mode. Oh, it's because this is in contacts and faults. That's why. Okay. So let me get my contacts and faults out of a clip group. This was my example that I used earlier, and it actually doesn't need to be in a clipping group. So we'll delete the clipping path. We'll ungroup everything so that now I can select the individual components. So. Using the contacts and faults was a bad example, but it served the purpose of showing how to prevent something from losing its clipping path. But contacts and faults typically has tons of these fonts, fonts that need to be dealt with. So now that I can select the physical text, click the drop down for regular, it now converts to the bar ball like we want. That was symbol five. This is a special case one. Symbol five, if we do type, find font, and jump to symbol five, now it's jumping around like it's supposed to, 
we'll see that our correct symbol 5 is symbol 5. There is no special characters to it like symbol 1 had. It's just a text information. So we convert symbol 5 with an exclamation mark to geosymbol 5 true type on. Change all. All of these become bar ball. Let's jump to the last one. We'll fix this. So select the text, make it regular. Now we have our queried symbol. Type, find font, three. Our three now looks like this. Let's verify that though. Let's look at our cheat sheet. And we can see that three has an up and down arrow and an up and down arrow. A lot of those look like um, foliation type symbols or lineation type symbols. Let's jump back over here. So we see a whole bunch of lineation symbols and up and down and up and down. So geosymbol 3 to this geosymbol 3. Change all. And we now have all of our fonts converted to the correct font file. And now everything is editable and adjustable too. So I can type in some other character here and get any symbol that I want. If we needed to change it, that is. So that's how we get the missing fonts issue corrected for FGDC fonts. This is a very common thing. I have yet to find a way to get AI to recognize these fonts as exported from ARC. I'm not sure what the issue is with it and I haven't delved into it too far because this is actually a pretty quick and simple fix. In the grand scheme of things this doesn't take much time at all to get corrected. So one other issue that we have when we export fonts from ARC to AI is we'll see that this is now a one-point font which it should not be. So I've learned a little trick. If we zoom out to our whole document, select everything, move it up by pushing the up arrow, wait a couple seconds for it to do that, push down to get it back to the location that it was. Now when we select any font, instead of saying one, it now jumps to its correct font. This forces Illustrator to pull in the information from ARC that it was missing before. Before this was a one point font, almost everything comes in as a one point font and we need to force it to move up and down to get this number to instead being one point font to switch to the correct thing. So all of these will say one point. Now they all say their correct font size. So that's another trick for getting your fonts to be the correct size so that when you select them, we know we have the right font size. All right, that's been a video on how to adjust the fonts in AI as exported from font, from ARC for the FGDC fonts.